Hey guys, what's up? I hope you're having an awesome day. I'm back in Chiang Mai, Thailand. I was in Taiwan traveling for a few weeks. We actually rode our bikes from the north of Taiwan to the south of Taiwan. It was hard. It's really difficult um, and I'm still recovering from that. But you might have noticed uh, I'm in a new room. I'm in a new office. Um, recently moved houses. So I'm still in Thailand, uh, but I got a new place, a little studio room. So hopefully I can start creating more content for you guys uh, like the video we're going to do today. Um, and today I'm going to show you guys how I would edit a photo from start to finish using my iPhone. Um, for the longest time I've edited on my computer, Lightroom, you know, on your PC is great. I love it, but editing on your smartphone is just so much more efficient and it's easy. I edit in bed, I edit at cafes, I can edit anywhere because, you know, I have a computer in my pocket and I think editing is kind of going that way. Um, especially now that you can use Lightroom presets on your mobile phone. That's just crazy. You can get high quality professional edits on your phone. And that's kind of why I've slowly transitioned my workflow to my phone. So today uh, we're going to be editing this photo from start to finish. I shot this in Bangkok uh, a little bit, a little while ago with my friend. I love the colors. I love the lighting. I love her pose. I love everything about it. Um, and actually we edit a very similar photo to this one in my most recent course. Um, editing on your smartphone, but where I basically talk about everything you need to know about editing on your smartphone. But we can talk about that later on in this video, but for now I wanna focus on this image. So let's dive into it. All right, sweet. We got our photo open here in Adobe Lightroom Mobile CC. Technically it doesn't have mobile in the name, but it's just so much easier to call it that. Anyways, here's the photo and here is Lightroom Mobile. So let's just jump into it. First thing I always do with the photo is edit the light tab. That's the, the first step I do. I always drop the highlights and slightly raise the shadows and that just increases our dynamic range, um, which basically means more detail in the highlights, more detail in the shadows. The next thing I do is I tap the white, I hold the white and then I slide that to the right. And while I'm doing that, I tap and hold my left thumb and what that'll do is it'll show us where we're losing detail in the white areas. So if I go back down, we have pretty much all the detail in the photo except for that bright light. But if I go up, we're losing detail in certain parts of the image. A lot of photographers will tell you that you don't wanna do that, but actually one of the greatest photographers of all time, Ansel Adams, who was a landscape photographer in California, he says you need a true black and white point for a good photo. So I've always believed that I like to have parts of my image that are clipped of any detail in the blacks and in the whites. So we're gonna go down, do the same thing with the blacks, hold with the left thumb, drag with the right. And now we're starting to lose detail in our hair. I'm good with that. I want a, a dark area in her hair. I think that looks pretty sweet. Cool. Uh, after the basic adjustments, yeah, it looks okay. But now it's time to edit the tone curve. And this is what makes your photo shine. Especially this first one here, the little, uh, looks like a Google Chrome symbol in the bottom left. Tap that. And then you're gonna get this tone curve. And the tone curve is basically just, yeah, adjusting the tones of the image. And this is what's gonna make your photo unique. So what I always do is I add three points boom, boom, boom. I drag this down. What that's going to do is darken those shadows. It's really going to make them deep and dark. And then if you go to the bottom left here and you drag that up, it's going to soften those shadows out. And just look at what that little adjustment did to our photo. It's beautiful now. I love it. Uh, and then we can do the same thing with the highlights. I don't like to do it too much because really bold highlights can be kind of crazy. And I'll just drag it down. And what this is called is an S curve. This is like a basic S curve. Um, a lot of your favorite photo photographers probably use something similar to this. And you can continue to raise that and make it softer. I like that really soft look right there. So we'll leave it there. Now, this is a, a, a part where a lot of people get kind of scared. And that's these RGB tone curves here. They're kind of complicated and they can really strongly affect your photo. Um, what they're doing is basically changing the color realm, right? So this is the uh, red primary and I can just completely change that red primary color, which can lead to some super cool effects. Um, but you can't go totally overboard with it. Usually what I do is I just only adjust the red one. So I do the same thing. I add three points and then I drag this bottom point down a tiny bit. And what that does is basically um, adds a little bit of blues into the shadows, kind of makes it kind of like a moody blue look. And when I was before, when I was doing like a uh, cafe and lifestyle stuff, I did that in all my photos. I had that kind of moody, deep blue look. And then with this, because I kind of want to balance it out a little bit, I'm going to drag this top point up a little bit. I'll leave that middle point in the middle there. Um, 
and I just I just make it really subtle like I don't want to do too much because this can really make your photo look kind of weird if you do it too much so I'm just going to do it a tiny bit but actually that does a lot to our photo there's the before and there's the after and look at the color depth and the interest of colors there and the shadows and in the highlights like we didn't have that before so that looks super cool um, and then we can go back to here and we can kind of adjust things and just to make sure like the exposure is good before we move on to editing color. That's the next step. So editing color here, basically we have a few different sliders, temperature, tint, vibrance, and saturation. Temperature, you wanna adjust that first. That's gonna be kind of the basis, the basis of color, the white balance of your photo. Um, usually the cameras are pretty good, um, but here you can tap this little a sampler here and you can drag it over a white area and it will sample that area and give you a accurate uh, white balance in this photo I think it, it's good where it is I like her skin tone I think it looks good I think the scene looks good so we're gonna leave that where it is um, vibrance we're gonna drag that down a little bit that's just personal preference I like to have kind of muted cooled out colors like that and then we'll jump into the color mix here and this is where you can really make colors unique so you can tap all the various colors here and then you can adjust their hue um, their saturation or their luminance um, and i like to kind of go through each one and fine tune it so you got to be careful with reds yellows and oranges because those are the skin tones that you're going to have in your photo see what i what happens when i do that it's kind of crazy so i'm not really going to adjust the hues of those if you did and you're working on skin, you can tap this thing here in the middle and then you can press and hold on the skin tone and then kind of scroll up and down. Um, I'm going to leave it where it is because I like her skin tone. But moving on to saturation, I think we can desaturate her skin like a tiny, tiny bit. I think she's a little bit too orange. Um, that looks good. And then what we can do also is tap and hold on her skin again and increase the luminance. And that's just going to like brighten the colors in her face just so she stands out a little bit better. I think that looks pretty sweet. Nice. And then we can go through and adjust the colors that aren't part of her skin tone. So the greens in the image, we can make them more yellow or we can make them more blue. Um, maybe a little bit more yellow would be okay. Uh, maybe desaturate a little bit. But we have a lot of blues in this photo and this is where I wanna add a lot of interesting color because she's wearing blue. Um, so we can really adjust that. So I'm gonna go to the blue here and I'm gonna drag the blue over towards the teal. This will make it purple. This will make it more greenish, kind of a teal or cyan color, uh, which complements really well with her skin tone, which is orange in this photo. So I'm gonna drag that over. Um, you can mess with the saturation if you want to. I think the saturation is good where it's at. Um, and maybe you can drag it down a little bit, luminance, make it a little bit more moody. And then these colors, these colors are actually, they are represented in this photo uh, in the top left corner here, but in a lot of photos, purple and magenta, they're just not really that common in photos. You don't see them in photos. So I'm just gonna leave those where they're at. But this is where we're at so far. Here's the before, here's the after. Love the tones, love the color. I love this photo. It's really, really cool photo. Um, and that's the majority of the adjustments that I would do. Um, then you can go in and you can add some effects. Uh, you can add some clarity. I don't like to go overboard with this, especially on portraits. It can do a lot to kind of distract uh, from the subject, but I still think it's a really cool feature and I use it in a lot of my photos. Um, the dehaze slider is really cool. If you wanna add more haze, you can go backwards with this. It is gonna brighten your photo a little bit or you can go forward and that's just gonna pull out more detail. I'm gonna leave that where it's at. Um, and then I do like to add a little bit of vignetting to kind of make it even more kind of old school. It already has vignetting from my lens, so I'm not gonna add too much. Um, then you can add grain. And uh, I like to add grain when I'm really softening the tones because that softness in the blacks and the shadows comes from a film look and film cameras have film grain. So you can kind of add that, add some texture to your photo. I think that's a really cool thing to do. Um, and then if you want to, you can go in and sharpen it. I don't mess around with those too much. Um, but basically the last thing I wanna fix is her skin. I think her skin um, could use some touching up. You could do this in Lightroom um, using the healing and selective 
features, but I actually, I like to do this in another app called Adobe Photoshop Fix, which I think is a little bit smarter, a little bit better. Um, so once you're done editing and you're sure that all the tones and everything are okay, um, because once you open it in Adobe Photoshop Fix, it won't be a raw file anymore. If you are editing a raw file, this is a raw file. So what I'm gonna do is tap this icon here on the top. I'm gonna click open in, hit maximum available, and then I'm gonna slide over from the app and copy to Photoshop Fix. And this is gonna open the photo up into Photoshop Fix. And actually I've already opened this photo, so it, uh, the settings are automatically saved, but essentially when I opened the photo, I clicked smooth and then I tapped face in the bottom right and it actually detected her face um, and automatically smoothed her skin, which is where you can see that mask. I didn't do that, that manually selected it. All I did was tap face and it automatically edited her skin. And look, her skin looks great. Like she already had really nice skin, but this just kind of softened it out a little bit, um, did all the smoothing for you. So I didn't have to manually do that, which is kind of annoying to do in Lightroom, to be honest with you. But after I do that, I'm just gonna hit this button here and I'm gonna save it. Save it to camera roll, save it to Lightroom, whatever. And you're pretty much good to go. You can post it on Instagram, on Facebook, whatever. And that is a professional edit done completely on your phone. So yeah, it's pretty simple. Uh, that's basically how I edit. Uh, I edit probably 90% of my photos on my phone nowadays, just because it's so much more accessible, so much easier. And um, yeah, as you can see, you can get some really cool uh, results from doing that. If you guys are interested in learning more, uh, specifically about editing color theory and editing and emotion and pretty much everything you need to know about editing specifically on your phone, um, check out my new course. Uh, it's basically $15 a month and you get access to all of the courses on Skillshare. It's honestly one of the best deals you can get. There's like 20,000 courses on Skillshare. I already have eight courses on there and I'm adding more all the time. So if you subscribe, you get access to all of them. Um, you can watch all of my courses, but I'm just highlighting this one because it's my newest one and it's relevant to the content in this video. So hope you guys enjoyed that. You can click the link down below to check out that Skillshare course, um, there's a free trial as well. So you get like two free months. And then after that, $15 a month, super cheap. Also, I have presets. If you guys want to uh, edit like me, a lot of my photos are edited with presets. Um, so you guys can check that out in the description below. But that's all I got for you guys. I'll be back with another video soon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.